Randolph Miller, and welcome to another segment of Bounce Around Charleston. We have a wonderful show for you today. I'm here with artist Jonathan Green, and when I leave here, I'm going to the St. Julian Divine Recreation Center. But now my guest, artist Jonathan Green. Welcome to Bounce Around Charleston. Hello, Reverend <laughs> Bishop. Oh. Community activist, leader. I am so oh. happy to be here with you. Thank you. And I shared with you earlier, because of you, I am doing this show. Well, full circle. Full circle. You, you invited me to MC a banquet breakfast brunch for you and our vice president, general manager, and the news director was there, and they said, we need to give that man a job. And the rest is history. It's a good history. Jonathan, tell our viewers exactly what inspired you to become an artist. Well, my start, I can't really say it's an inspiration. Mm. It was preordained. Okay. I was born with the veil, the pl mm -hmm. placenta memory. I heard that term. And my grandmother, Eloise Stewart Johnson, knew that I was special. Mm. Because when you're, as I learned, when you're born with the veil, it's a very thin, thin membrane. Mm -hmm. And if you don't remove it immediately from the child, the child suffocates and dies. Mm -hmm. So I'm a child that is always between life and death. That's been my mm -hmm. path my entire life. I've come close to death a number of times, but I never had any fear. And when you are raised, I believe, by elders, mm -hmm. uh, you have sort of a sixth sense or a third eye, they call mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and you know very early in life what your destiny is. I knew very early in life that I would go on to do something exciting or helpful for the community or for the people. So I always knew that. Art making was always very, very easy for me. I never had to think or study anything mm -hmm. about art. Every grade I can remember from first grade all the way up to seventh grade and in high school I did art projects for the teachers. I did the bulletin boards, I cut out paper mm -hmm. and did drawings and then I made a little money on the side because I did the science projects for a lot of kids. I drew the flowers and the trees and the animals. Can you remember what your first art piece was? My first art piece was a Let's see, I was in the fifth grade, mm -hmm. this is why I remember, but of course I've done lots <laughs> before fifth grade. But my first recognized piece was mm -hmm. in the fifth grade, and I did two Siamese kittens playing in the window with a bowl of, a ball of yarn, and it was raining on the outside. So I did all of that in the fifth grade, mm -hmm. and I was entered into a county art contest, Beaufort County Art Contest. Mm -hmm. I won first place, uh, and that first place was normally reserved for high school students. So they couldn't believe a fifth grader did it. Wow. And they were shocked that a black fifth grader did it. Mm -hmm. So they just didn't, you know, we were still in segregated mm -hmm. society. And they just didn't know how to talk about me or to acknowledge that a person, a little black kid from Gardens Corner, South Carolina, had the sophistication mm -hmm. to paint Siamese kittens. Gardens Corner, South Carolina. Yes. Outside of Beaufort. It's the crossroads between Beaufort and Charleston. Wow. Can't get to Charleston if you don't go through Gardens Corner. And Gardens Corner was a, a stop off depot of sorts. Mm -hmm. where, you know, because it was a long trip from Beaufort to Charleston. And when uh, the great Robert Smalls was shipped up to Charleston, he stopped off in Gardens Corner. Not far. Now, a lot of your art work is about family. Oh. Is about family. Mm -hmm. uh, as an artist, as a, I should say, crafted artist, mm -hmm. an artist that actually knows how to draw mm -hmm. and how to paint mm -hmm. without looking at anything, mm -hmm. uh, you focus on what is most endearing to you. And mm -hmm. for me, it has always been my family. Your family, <laughs> okay. Always. The, the camp meetings and the Every aspect of life. Uh, by the time I got into, I went into military uh, just to sort of to get away and 
experience the world a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I ended up at a vocational institution and I studied textiles. And it was at that school that my professors literally put me on a train and said, go to Chicago Art Institute and we will be here the next day to pick you up. Mm. And that's what I did. And when I walked, got off the train, walked across Michigan Avenue, up to the museum and saw those two huge lions, I knew I was in the right place. I'm a Leo. So I you are, I was you're Leo? You're Leo? lions, yeah. That's why we get along. <laughs> you're a Leo also? Yes, yeah, July 23rd. You know, we're the best. We can get along with every sign under the zodiac. Wow. And then your art has been put to music, the My, ballet. It has been put in every uh, expression of the arts. Uh, and all of this is, by, you know, it's a, a lot of it is by chance. It's being mm -hmm. in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. and also wanting to work. You know, I've always worked around elders all of okay. my life. Okay. Uh, and when you have an opportunity, especially in your 20s and 30s, to work around successful people, mm -hmm. talented people, as I did in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, the world was a very easy place for me to operate and exist in. Mm -hmm. Chicago is a fabulous city. I knew fabulous people. My, uh, my one of my um, first, I was mentored by uh, the great Essie Cupsonet. Okay. Who's the wife of Herb Cupsonet from the Chicago Sun Times? Uh, I was uh, supported by uh, Mrs. Johnson of Johnson Publication, mm. uh, Mrs. Etta Moten Barnett, uh, the great Dr. Margaret Bell Rose, Gwendolyn Brooks. Uh, these are all the people I knew in the 70s in Chicago. Mm. I spent a lot of time at Southside Community Arts Center, and they're celebrating their 80th anniversary this year. So I have been elected as co-chair to their 80th anniversary. And the chair is my dear friend and collector, Patrick McCoy, who is an, a, a retired environmental scientist. So in October, full circle, I go back to Chicago uh, as a honored guest mm -hmm. and, a, and a, a respected and appreciated artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, to- From Guards Corner. From Guards Corner. Well, you know, most artists, come from very, very small towns. Mm -hmm. uh, we are truly the seers coming from small towns because we want to get out, we want to explore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not mm -hmm. intimidated by anything when you mm -hmm. come from Gardens Corner. You are, well, what are you intimidated by? So for me, uh, it was very easy. Uh, I also have a minor in education, mm -hmm. which I uh, never had to use because mm -hmm. I've always been successful as an artist. When I at the Art Institute of Chicago, I was, again, my work was uh, selected to be a part of a uh, senior show. Uh, in those days, the senior shows were at the museum, the Morton Wing Museum at the Art Institute of Chicago. I was a sophomore, mm. and they thought I was a senior. So I got a painting into the museum. Well, when that happened, I just knew my path was very clear. Very wow. Clear. So is that all of your work is about your family? And the history, family, and history, and uh, and 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 uh, of course, the older I got, the history became more expansive mm -hmm. outside of my knowledge as a child, mm -hmm. but certainly within reach of the history and the culture of the Low Country. So I focus primarily on the history and the culture of the Low Country. I use people to tell the story, but the story is really about the history of rice culture. Uh, the West Africans that came here. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I, I don't operate from the perspective of slavery or enslaved people. Mm -hmm. uh, I have given my people through my art uh, citizenship, freedom. Okay. As a child, the people I saw were the most beautiful people, immaculately dressed, mm -hmm. well-groomed, church people. I lived in the church most of my time. I'm, I'm probably celebrating my 55th year as an usher at the Husband Baptist Church. Wow. <laughs> and my purpose for being there at the church as an artist, to most as a famous artist, but mm -hmm. certainly to my community as an artist and as a loved community person, is to greet people. That's what an usher does. Say good morning, mm -hmm. open the door, help them out. That's the only way I can really be in the so what brought you back? Well, 
Richard and I, my partner for 46 years, we mm -hmm. were living in Naples, Florida, and we had been there 25 years, mm -hmm. and the, there, was, there was this huge crash. I mean, Bernie Madoff and all those people mm -hmm. in 2006 mm -hmm. and nine, And we were not sure if living and uh, having your income depending, depended on the arts if we could survive living there on a 25-acre property. Mm -hmm. So we had decided to give the property up, and it was just a perfect time to move back to South Carolina. Richard became very ill. He had a double uh, aneurysm, mm -hmm. and so I had to retire from my work for a year to nurse mm -hmm. him, bring him back to health. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I remember walking around our property, and I always gazed up at a palmetto palm tree. Mm. And one evening, I gazed up at that palm tree, and right next to it was a crescent moon. And that was my sign to return. That was your home. sign. OK, we've moved from your very humble beginnings to your understanding, your calling, your artwork. And then just recently, you were honored. Tell us about that. Well, I was floored. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I was late, kind of late getting there. And they, everyone wants to ensure that I get to somewhere. <laughs> I, they probably think I'm not going to show up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the director, Angela Mack, made sure that uh, the, our director of the Low Country Rice Culture Project, Dr. Kim Long, would get me there. Well, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kim Long had to leave town. So I was getting all these calls about making sure you're going to be there, and, and they didn't tell me what I was. You didn't even. I was you didn't even know what you were so I had no idea. Wow. But I knew of the importance of that award, to be, uh, and I think uh, we're in the fifth or sixth year of that award. It is so humbling to mm. be respected and appreciated as an artist in your community. And the highest level of art appreciation and respect in our community is the Gibbs Museum. And to be uh, appreciated, uh, uh, bestowed upon with this award, mm -hmm. uh, it was just so, I was speechless. So the award was given by? It was given by the Gibbs Museum mm -hmm. for philanthropy, for support of the Gibbs Museum. And it's given once a year to someone mm. or a company. It's usually given to you know, businesses, mm -hmm. organizations, and uh, uh, philanthropists. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have some money, but I was thinking I had, you know, <laughs> I had that kind of money to be getting a, you know, wow. an award, the Gibbs Award from the Gibbs Museum. So that art. blew your mind? It totally blew my mind. And then to be second with the Bishop Gurry Award from uh, Grace uh, Cathedral Church uh, was another mind blower. And it just seems that, you know, during COVID, I use COVID as, a, as probably one of the finer opportunities of my life as an artist in the studio to get a lot of work done. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't have to go out, didn't have to travel. And uh, so I just immersed myself in working. I still maintain my 10 to 12 hours a day, six mm -hmm. days a week. And, uh, you know, to be rewarded for those things. And yet, as an artist, the community really doesn't know much about you as an artist. They mm -hmm. know about my work, but mm -hmm. they know very little about me as a person. And so right now, what are you working on? Right now I'm working on, I'm wrapping up a series of six paintings around the dugout canoe. And uh, with the Low Country Rice Culture Project, which is a, a cooperation we started to help educate people mm -hmm. about the history of culture, of culture of West African mm -hmm. and West Africans' cultural influences mm -hmm. in the Low Country, uh, one of the best ways to tell those stories is through art. People have to see it in order to start to believe it. And I always remind people that the great book, the Bible, mm. People learned, because most people were illiterate in this country, when you mm -hmm. go back to 18, early 1800s, I mean, 98% of the people were illiterate. 
But they learn the stories of the Bible because of the paintings, because, because of, the of paintings. Rembrandt and Titian. And I remember as a kid looking in big Bibles and seeing those fabulous paintings. And I was more moved and struck by the paintings. Mm -hmm. The stories people remember, they remember these stories from the paintings because I knew a lot of people could not read. So that's, that's the greatness of art. You get the whole story from the artwork. That's right. Well, artist Jonathan Green, we want to tell you thank you for this opportunity to sit down and have a wonderful moment. Well, I feel honored. And uh, my day will continue by wrapping up this painting for uh, Dr. Jack Schaefer that's going to be at 20 South Battery. And that is uh, one of the paintings from the Canoe series. And to have a painting of that size in one of the grand homes of Charleston is, for me, the icing on the cake. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you heard it here on Bounce Around Charleston. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 